Hey everyone, this lesson is on ketone body synthesis, also known as ketogenesis. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about the molecular pathway by which ketone bodies are actually synthesized. And we're also going to talk about where in our bodies ketone bodies are actually produced as well. So what are ketone bodies? You might have heard of ketone bodies, but what are they exactly? Well, ketone bodies are actually just an energy source, and we're actually going to talk about why they're important in a moment. So ketone body synthesis actually requires high levels of acetyl-CoA, and the high levels of acetyl-CoA could be a consequence of decreased pyruvate dehydrogenase activity, but the ultimate source of acetyl-CoA actually comes from beta oxidation of fatty acids. Now, this source of acetyl-CoA and the production and synthesis of ketone bodies occurs primarily in liver hepatocytes. Now, it also occurs in other areas in the body, but to a lesser extent, and some of the areas include kidney epithelia and uh, actually astrocytes in our brain, but again, very minimal levels of ketone body synthesis in these locations. Now, ketone bodies as an energy source are actually incredibly important during fasting and probably one of the more important locations for ketone body utilization during fasting is the brain. So the brain utilizes ketone bodies during fasting to reduce its reliance on glucose. Now the brain almost entirely is dependent on glucose because the blood-brain barrier is actually impenetrable to fatty acids. Fatty acids cannot actually cross the blood the blood brain barrier and enter the brain. So the brain only typically uses glucose. So during fasting, that's why the brain utilizes ketone bodies to reduce the reliance on glucose. And there are also other tissues uh, that use ketone bodies, which we'll talk about in another lesson as well. So as I mentioned before, the primary location for ketone body synthesis is in liver hepatocytes. And this um, requires a high level of acetyl-CoA, which is uh, the product of beta oxidation of fatty acids. And again, this is occurring in the liver. So once we have a high level of acetyl-CoA in a liver hepatocyte, what will happen is the enzyme acetoacetyl-CoA thiolase will actually take two acetyl-CoAs and add them together to form acetoacetyl-CoA. So once we have acetoacetyl-CoA, another acetyl-CoA will come along and via the enzyme HMG-CoA synthase will actually produce 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutaryl-CoA or HMG-CoA. Now HMG-CoA synthase is the rate-limiting step in ketone synthesis or ketone body synthesis. So that is a very important point to remember guys. Now there are actually a couple of different isoforms of HMG-CoA synthase. For the purpose of ketone body synthesis, the one that's important is the mitochondrial isoform. So mitochondrial HMG-CoA synthase or synthetase. So because it's the rate, lim rate limiting step, it's highly regulated and it's actually regulated by um, a protein known as FOXA2. Now this protein is actually itself upregulated or activated by glucagon and downregulated or inhibited by insulin. So as you can see, the opposing levels of each of these hormones, such as glucagon and insulin, will actually ultimately regulate ketone body synthesis. So again, glucagon is at high levels during extreme fasting or during nutrient deprivation. You get higher, higher levels of glucagon, which ultimately leads to an increase in ketone body synthesis. So once we have 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutaryl-CoA or HMG-CoA, this HMG-CoA, you may have seen if you've watched my previous lesson on cholesterol synthesis, if this was in the cytosol, if HMG-CoA was in the cytosol, it can actually be used for cholesterol synthesis. But again, as we mentioned before, we're in the mitochondria. And when we're in the mitochondria, this HMG-CoA is actually used for ketone synthesis. So just remember that, guys, that HMG-CoA uh, it can be used in a different pathway for cholesterol synthesis when in when inside the cytosol. But when in the mitochondria, it is used for ketone synthesis. Once we have HMG-CoA within the mitochondria, we can undergo a reaction via the enzyme HMG-CoA lyase. Now what happens is one of the acetyl-CoA's will actually be removed again. And 
in the process, this will produce acetoacetate. Now, acetoacetate is actually one of the ketone bodies, one of the classical ketone bodies. There are actually three of them. This is one of them. So acetoacetate is important to remember. Now, acetoacetate itself can undergo a spontaneous degradation to form acetone. And then this acetone can actually be exhaled. So uh, interestingly, uh, during ketoacidosis, we can actually measure acetone in a patient's breath to see whether the patient is ketoacidotic. And acetone is actually considered a ketone body as well. Now, there's also another reaction. Um, instead of the acetoacetate becoming uh, spontaneously degraded, it can actually undergo another enzymatic reaction with the enzyme beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. And this is very important. This actually produces beta-hydroxybutyrate. Beta-hydroxybutyrate is the most abundant ketone body. This is the one that is probably the um, most important or primary ketone body that is produced, beta-hydroxybutyrate. And this reaction actually requires an NADH. It's an NADH-dependent reaction. So we actually need NADH for this reaction to proceed. So once we have beta-hydroxybutyrate, this beta-hydroxybutyrate can be used and actually exported out of the liver hepatocyte into the blood to be used by other tissues, which we'll talk about in another lesson. So that's the ketone body synthesis pathway. It's very simple. Just remember that the three ketone bodies that are produced are actually beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate and acetone with beta hydroxybutyrate being the most abundant. Anyways guys that was a quick lesson on ketone body synthesis. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this video please like and subscribe for more videos like this one and as always thank you so much for watching and have a great day.